dear students of class 12 very pleasant good morning to you all hope all of you have done your exam very well dear students today i am here with our short story number 9 sound machine part 3 part 3 part 3 i have already uh, completed two classes this is the third part and we are from page number 106 209 pages we will be learning pages 106 110 this is what we are going to learn today you may remember that in our previous class um, how our clusener our clusener was trying or experimenting to listen the inaudible voices that is happening around according to his theory you have remember the theory there are high pitched uh, sounds which our ears are not able to listen or if the pitch is so high we are not able to hear them or if the pitch is too low then we are not able to hear them and according to his theory there are sounds that we need to we can listen and through the machine our cluster was making an experiment and as he was uh, trying with his machine he saw her his neighbor uh, that is mrs sanders coming to her garden and cutting the roses the moment she cut the rose with scissors she could hear a painful cry shrieking sound and he could not understand from where it was coming and finally what he did he asked mrs sanders to cut one one more rose and he listened the exact moment she cut the rose there was a severe cry painful cry from the rose plant that is what he said and hearing this one uh, he stopped all right he said that is enough no more please no more perhaps why our cluster said that one because the sound which he heard was so painful so tragic tragic cry of a rose plant that is the reason okay from there on page number 106 middle point onwards the woman stood there a yellow rose in one hand clippers in the other looking at him i am going to tell you something mrs sanders he said something that you won't believe he put his hands on the top of the fence and peered at her intently through his thick spectacles very carefully looking at mrs sanders you have this evening cut a basket full of roses you have with a sharp pair of scissors cut through the stems of living things and each rose that you cut screamed in the most terrible way when you cut the rose each rose cried in its most terrible way did you know that mrs sanders no she said i certainly didn't know that no i did not know that it happens to be true he said he was breathing rather rapidly but he was trying to control his excitement i heard them shrieking each time you cut one i heard the cry of pain a very high pitched sound approximately 132000 vibrations a second you couldn't possibly have heard it yourself but i heard it he tell clusener is telling yep the moment you cut the rose i could hear the pitiable cry from the rose plant did you really mr clusener she decided she would make a dash for the house in about 5 seconds she thought of running to hers you might say he went on that a rose bush 
has no nerve system to feel with, no throat to cry with? You would be right. It hasn't. No like a words anyway. But how do you know, Mrs. Sundays? And here he leaned far over the fence and spoke in a fierce whisper. How do you know that a rose bush doesn't feel as much pain when someone cuts its stem in two as you would feel if someone cut your wrist off with a garden shears? How do you know that? It's alive, isn't it? It is alive. Yes, Mr. Klusner, oh yes, and good night. Quickly she turned and ran up the garden to her house. Klusner went back to the table. He put on the earphones and stood for a while listening. He could still hear the faint crackling sound and the humming noise of the machine, but nothing more. Now, the experiment is over. The lady has gone back to her house, but he could hear no more sound of the painful cry of a plant, except the sound of machine. He bent down and took hold of a small white daisy growing on the lawn. He bent down to pluck a daisy flower, a white daisy growing on the lawn. He took it between thumb and finger, thumb and finger like this, and slowly pulled it upward and sideways until the stem broke. He pulled up and sideways and he pulled until the stem broke. From the moment that he started pulling to the moment when the stem broke, he heard, he distinctly heard in the earphones a faint high-pitched cry, curiously inanimate. The moment he lifted or uh, raised the daisy plant and turned to sideways and lifted until it broke, he could hear the cry. He took another daisy and did it again. Once more he heard the cry, but he wasn't so sure now that it expressed pain. The plant, the daisy plant, when he plucked again, it made some sound, but he could not really analyze whether it was a painful cry or not. No, it was in the pain, it was surprise, or was it? It didn't really express any of the feelings or emotions known to a human being. It was just a cry, a neutral stony cry, a single emotionless note expressing nothing. It made some sound, definitely it made some sound and a closener is not sure whether this cry was just a painful cry or expression of any other emotions. It had been the same with the roses. He had been wrong in calling it a cry of pain. It was almost same with the See, he had been wrong in calling it a cry or pain. A flower probably didn't feel pain. It felt something else which we don't know about, something called toin or spur or uh, plinkment or anything you like. Some kind of sound, some kind of agony, pain it made. That means what our closener is trying to prove. When we pluck out something, or cut a living organism, a plant, a flower, and so on, it makes some kind of sound. It makes some kind of sound, but definitely don't know what is that particular sound. On page number 108, let us see. He stood up and removed the earphones. It was getting dark and he could see Pricks of light shining in the windows of the houses all around him. Carefully, he picked up the black box from the table, carried it into the shed and put it on the workbench. Then he went out, locked the door behind him and walked up to the 
how so after the experiment of day 1 our cluzner in the evening late in the evening took the machine back to his workshop and placed it on the bench and returned to his house the next morning cluzner was up as soon as it was light he dressed and went straight to the shed he picked up the machine and carried it outside clasping it to his chest with both hands walking instantly under its weight he went past the house out through the front gate and across the road to the park now this time our cluzner is going to do uh, day say day two he took his machine and he is walking to the park maybe to do a bigger or better experiment there he paused and looked around him then he went on until he came to a large tree a beech tree and he placed the machine on the ground close to the trunk of the tree quickly he went back to the house and got an axe from the coal cellar and he carried it across the road into the park he put the axe on the ground beside the tree then he looked around him again peering nervously through his thick glasses in every direction there was no one about it was 6 in the morning so it was morning time and there was no but he he put the earphones on his head and switched on the machine he listened for a moment to the faint familiar humming sound then he picked up the axe took a stance with his legs wide apart and swung the axe as hard as he could at the base of the tree trunk so finally he hit kuladi se mar diya the blade cut deep into the wood and stuck there at the and at the instant of impact he heard a most extraordinary noise in the earphones and the the moment he struck the axe on the trunk of the tree he could hear some extraordinary a different kind of sound in his earphone it was a new noise unlike any he had heard before a harsh noteless enormous noise a growling low pitched screaming sound not quick and short like the noise of the roses but drawn out like a sob lasting for fully a minute almost for a moment for a minute he could listen that sound loudest at the moment when the axe struck fading gradually fainter and fainter until it was gone cluzner start uh, stayed in horror at the place where the blade of the axe had sunk into the into the wood flesh of the tree then gently he took the axe handle worked the blade loose and threw the thing on the ground after removing the axe from the trunk of the tree he threw it on the ground with his fingers he touched the gash that the axe had made on the wood so gash means the gash means the wound that is cut mark yes gash that the axe had made in the wood touching the edges of the gash trying to press them together to close the wound and he kept saying tree oh tree i am sorry i am so sorry but it will heal it will heal fine so he was almost trying to press the the gash of the wound or the that the open cut mark and tightening together he feeling very much pain why he is doing all these things because he could really hear the pitiable or the pay the most painful cry that is made from the tree so 
and really our closener felt really sorry for the painful cry of the tree that was caused by his uh, cut tree or oh, tree i am sorry i am so sorry but it will heal it will heal fine for a while he stood there with his hands upon the trunk of the great tree then suddenly he turned away and hurried off out of the park across the road through the front gate and back into the house leaving the machine at the axe everything he rushed back to his house let us see for what purpose he went to the telephone consulted the book dialed a number and waited he held the receiver tightly in his left hand and tapped the table impatiently with high with his right he heard the telephone buzzing at the other end and then the click of a lifted receiver and a man's voice a sleepy voice saying hello yes dr scott he said yes speaking dr scott you know his family doctor whose family doctor mr clusners yes Dr Scott you must come at once quickly please who is it speaking Klusner here and you remember what i told you last night about my experience with sound and high and how i hoped i might yes yes of course but what is the matter are you ill no i am not ill but it is half past 6 in the morning the doctor said and you call me but you are not ill it is just 6:30 half past 6 in the morning and you say you are not ill when what is the matter please come come quickly i want someone to hear it please come quickly i want someone to hear it so probably why our clusener is calling our dr scott he is called because clusener wanted to make doctor scott to listen the pitiable cry that is made by the tree through another experiment the same cry which he heard he wants to make others also listen please come come quickly i want someone to hear it it is driving me mad i can't believe it it is making me crazy the doctor heard the frantic almost hysterical note in the man's voice hysterical nervous yes crazy the same note he was used to hearing in the voices of people who called up and said there has been an accident come quickly he said slowly you really want me to get out of bed and come over now doctor is again confirming do you want me to get up from the bed and come right now yes now at once please all right then i will come close now yes what is our page number okay page number 110 as i told all right then i will come so doctor finally agreed to visit our call up our uh, close now Klusner sat down beside the telephone and waited. He tried to remember what the shriek of the tree had sounded like, but he couldn't. He could remember only that it had been enormous and frightful and that it had made him feel sick with horror. He tried to imagine what sort of noise a human would make if he had to stand anchored to the ground while someone deliberately swung a small sharp thing at his leg so that the blade cut in deep and wedged itself in the cut some sort of noise perhaps no quite indifferent our clusener is just imagining what would happen if the same situation happened to a human person what type of painful cry that the person would make and he feels no quite different type of cry the noise of the tree was worse than any non human noise because of that frightening toneless throatless quality throatless toneless 
frightening quality of the sound that is made by the cut of the tree he began to wonder about other living things and he thought immediately of a field of wheat a field of wheat standing up straight and yellow and alive with the mower going through it cutting it cutting the stems 500 stems a second every second oh my god what would that noise be like 500 wheat plants screaming together and every second another 500 being cut and screaming and no he thought i do not want to go to a wheat field with my machine he told no i don't want to go to a field uh, go to a wheat field to listen this sound already after the exper- experiment our cluster is feeling so much uncomfortable in his mind by hearing the cry of rose plants daisy plant and of course the the cry of the trunk of the tree now that was, those were the single cries now second in a second 500 600 plants cutting at a time and what a terrible cry that would be i would never eat bread after that no after listening the cry i won't be able to eat the wheat but what about potatoes and cabbages and carrots and onions and what about apples oh no apples are all right they fall off naturally when they are ripe apples are all right if you let them fall off instead of tearing them from the tree branch our cluster find it difficult to eat any item that is coming from the plant or trees and now he feels okay with apple only you can eat them after they naturally fall down before if you tear or pluck it forcefully then definitely that apple also would make so much painful cry yes but not vegetables not a potato for example a potato would surely shriek so would a carrot and an onion and a cabbage so he feels he is not going to eat he is not going to eat any of those vegetables after listening the painful cry he heard the click of the front gate latch and he jumped up and went out and saw the tall doctor coming down the path a little black bag in hand well doctor well the doctor said well what is all the trouble come with me doctor i want you to hear it i called you because you are the only one i have told it's over the road in the park will you come now yes the doctor looked at him he seemed calmer now his legs there was no sign of madness or hysteria he was merely disturbed and excited yes dear students here we stop let me remind you about the class today we have learned from pages 106 to 110 in fact page number 11 the top and our story sound machine part number 3 written by ronald dal characters glusner and this dr scott and what he was trying so in our class today we learned the experiment day one experiment and day two experiment day one experiment of course with the first day's experiment that was with rose garden where mr glusner asked our mrs sanders to cut the rose and he recorded the sound then he himself plucked one daisy from the lawn and he led the sound then the next day mo- morning he took the machine to the uh, uh, to the park near his house and made a cut on the trunk of a tree with his axe 
and he heard the sound and he became very much panic and he called his doctor scott and finally doctor scott arrived and slowly he is taking mr klusner is taking doctor scott to the park uh, to listen what he heard from the tree all right thank you very much today we stop here and we uh, probably we will complete our class tomorrow all right you take care please listen the video and uh, learn thank you very much